what's going on you guys welcome back to another video and today i will be showing you how to create your first roblox game uh most people would start with something like an obby or a sword fighting game for for this um for this one i'm gonna start off with a sword fighter game so we're gonna go ahead and go to the classic base plate or the base plate whichever one you want when you if you go to the um, regular base plate, uh, the 2021 version, you're going to want to delete the spawn because we're going to be making our own. The first step you're going to need for your sword fighting game is just a sword. So the Roblox, the default Roblox sword, this default Roblox sword should be fine. So if you test our game so far, basically what you're going to um, spawn in with is a basic sword. And the sword really doesn't do much now. All it does is make it so you can attack the other players with the sword. And so the swords, it doesn't really have as much detail right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to insert a trail to it. Because we want our sword to be unique. We want it to be not like any other sword fighting games. So if you've already seen my how to make a trail video, then good for you. Because we will be making the trail for the sword here. You can just uh, either watch that video or just keep watching this one. But the other one, I go in depth on how to do certain things with it. But what you're going to want to do is insert your attachment. It should uh, be named attachment, and you're going to want to name that attachment 0. When you duplicate, attachment 1. And you're going to want to make attachment 0 at the top or the bottom of the sword. It's whatever you want. And attachment 1 at the bottom part of the sword. We go into the trail attachment zero, you select it there, and attachment one there. And we're gonna set the lifetime to 0.5. So basically the, the trail will go on for 0.5 seconds when you're running, It's so you don't want your trails going everywhere. So what you're gonna wanna do, if you want color to your sword, you're gonna wanna select where you want that color to go to. Like if I want orange here, and then maybe a little bit of green here, uh, then you would just do like this, close, and now if we test, our sword should have a trail. Alright, so there we go. We have sword trails set up. The next step that we're going to do is insert a spawn. You're going to click the top of the spawn and press backspace to delete the decal, and we're going to set the transparency of it to one and uh, can't collide can stay on or can, and can't touch can be off recently roblox said can't touch i'm pretty sure it makes it so okay yeah you're gonna also want to turn off can't collide i don't know what can't touch does roblox added it a few days ago i really have no clue what it does but uh what else okay so let's say we want multiple spawn locations let's just make this trend um fully transparent or sorry fully visible so we're gonna want the players to spawn here 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 and here and if you want you can actually keep these spawn locations or you can keep them visible we can make them like black like this and if you want you can change the base plate to a dark green grass color so our game, it's looking pretty decent, but uh, the map's kind of big if we're going to only have a... Uh, let's say we're going to have our game having about... Eh, what's a good amount of players for a sword fighting game? Let's have it somewhere around like 15. I think 15 players would be good. So all the players will spawn at these four locations, but or if you want them to spawn at any location this map, here's what you're going to want to do. You're going to want to basically put the map here. Or you're, sorry, you're going to want to put the spawn here. Just stretch it out as far as you can, or to the map's very edge. And just uh, make sure it fills up the entire grass. Alright, so transparency 1. And there we go. So if you test the game, you should spawn somewhere random on the grass. Alright, so the game decided to spawn us in the corner. If we play again, hopefully it spawns us elsewhere. Alright, so there we go. This time it spawned us right here. So it does spawn you at a random location. Um, what else? Okay, so let's say we want to add some decorations to the map. Let's add some walls. 
So let's just go ahead and scale this a little bit. Let's make it slate. And it's already gray for us, so we would change the color if we don't want it to be gray. Or let's make this metal, actually, because we want like this nice, I guess, metal-ish wall. And we're going to scale this here, make it black. And let's say we want these black parts every five studs. So you would do like this. And you may need to readjust your um, main base back part. Oops, don't want to select the spawn location. Uh, also, if you want, this is optional. You can lock the spawn so you don't accidentally click on it. It's really useful. Alright, so we're going to select all these black pieces, and we're going to select move, and then do control D to duplicate them. And we're going to drag them to the opposite side, and so we have sort of like a wall for players to hide behind. And if we want to, we can duplicate this, scale it all the way up. If you scale it perfectly, it should just um, perfectly align at the top, so we have a top part for the wall. And you can scale it to make it just look a little bit better. So we have our wall here. And another thing I think we should do is set the tr uh, transparency to 0.5. Or, you know, uh, what about 0.2? So you can at least see if there's a player on the opposite side. And if we right click this and press group, or you can just do control G, it'll group it together. We can call this glass wall. So here we go. We have a few glass walls. I feel like this is a paintball game, you know. If you want, you could uh, search paint gun in the toolbox and you can make a paintball game instead. I'm sure you'd get some players for that. And um, some tips are if you want your game to get out there, if you have like a good amount of followers on a social media or whatever, you, what you can do is promote your game on there. Say, come check out my new game on, on Twitter or Instagram, TikTok, whatever, social app, YouTube, which is what I'm making this video on right now. Or you could actually go to your game's page and you could sponsor the game or you could make an advertisement for it. I might go into that on a later tutorial. And so if we test the game right now, we should just spawn randomly and we have random glass walls and we have our um, orange and green sword here. Okay, so another thing that we're going to need to fix is some players can jump out of the map, which is something you really don't want in a sword fighting game, so you don't want people to jump out of the map. So an easy fix for this, I actually struggled with this, uh, with actually figuring out how to do this when I first started using Roblox Studio, but now it's like really dang easy. You're just going to want to scale this as much as you want. So this is basically your, our map barrier, it, it's going to prevent the players from exiting the map. We're going to name this barrier and we're going to anchor it and then we're just going to duplicate it around the map until we have all four of our glass walls, or sorry not glass walls, until we have all four of our barriers. And this is optional but you can also add a roof to it. So we're just going to duplicate, scale it up like that, and boom. Which what we're going to want to do is select all the barriers and name it barriers and then you can um, select the children and then make it transparency one. So if we test our game again now, we should have barriers so players cannot commit suicide and jump out of the map. So that's that. And we're going to go ahead and open a local server. What a local server is, it's, it basically lets you put play the game on however many clients you want. So if you wanted to play on one player, two player, three player, four player, five, or whatever. Also, if you get this Windows security alert, just allow access to private and public networks so you don't get it in the future. I only got it because uh, I had to reinstall Studio because it was like being really choppy and my CPU was like being really messed up. So as you can see, we are on our client. And as you can see, if we go back to this client, the sword trail should be updating on there, and you should be able to kill the other players with the sword. And next step is, let's say you would want like a KOs and woes, or like kills and deaths uh, leader stats in the top right corner, or like a leaderboard. 
It's as simple as searching leaderboard in the toolbox in the, um, you should see, or er, kills leaderboard, and there should be a kills slash deaths leaderboard. You can either keep it in workspace, or you can put it into server script service. I don't recommend putting it to any other, any of the other, um, any other, any of the other classes, or there's a chance that the script might not work because sometimes the scripts only work in certain classes. So let's go ahead and open up our local server once again. And when we open up our local server, two clients should open up as usual. And also another thing we can do is this: we can modify the server. So basically if you modify the server, you could move objects on here and in game they would be moving also. So that's pretty cool. And if you didn't know how exploits work, it actually just modifies a player's client. But if you have a really expensive one, um, if you have like a really expensive one, you can modify the server. But if you basically client, it basically lets you move things on your client instead of moving them on the server. So if we check um, the main server, you'd see that that isn't out here. Anyways, let's get back to testing the kill slash death leaderboard and the other players over here. So it should give us a kill and then a death. So let's go ahead and test that out. And it does not work. So that, okay. Uh, there is one by Roblox. It was, um, I think it might have just been leader stats. Okay, I really forgot. Kills leaderboard. Is this the exact same one? This is the same one. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, so after like five minutes, I finally found a working kills and death. A working kills and death leaderboard. I really need to change my pa un pause and pause keybind because it always play tests when I'm doing one of these tutorials. But if you actually scroll down, you should see this leaderboard here by Roblox. It's an official Roblox model, and when you insert it, it should be linked to leaderboard. Just keep that in workspace. And I already had it inserted, so I guess it, so. We have our KOs and wipeouts, so we're play testing right now on our local server. And if we attack this player, we get one KO, and they get one wipeout. Also. Another way to find this without looking up leaderboard is like if you're watching like a year later and it's not there is if you go here and you search Roblox and you press apply and you should be able to search leaderboard and you should find one that's by Roblox. So it's really not that hard to do that. And the next thing that we're going to focus on is the game's lighting. So Let's uh, go ahead and change this to future, if you're f making your game more realistic. You can't really notice a difference because we don't have too many parts and light sources here, but compatibility is the worst graphic setting you can use, then voxel, then shadow map, then future. So you put in future if you want the most realistic possible. And also when you were making your game and you were making, and you decided to make it uh, the grass template, you can go to the terrain and then turn on the realistic grass. So that's a pretty cool thing you can do too. And I think that's pretty much it. But uh, also in lighting, if you want to make it way more realistic, you can insert blur, change it to like uh, six, um, insert some color correction, and you can change it to how you want your game to look. Like if you want to make it look a certain way, you could change it on here. So let's say I want my game to be like this. Right, there you go. And let's say we want to add some new weapons. Or like if you want to add um, a paintball gun, you just search paintball. And then you have the official Roblox paintball gun. And one more thing. That I think this is pretty important. If you don't want people to uh, drop the weapons, you're going to want to change the can be dropped property to false. 
So when you press backspace in game, it shouldn't um, drop the orb. So there, I'm pressing backspace, it just unequips it. And if we shoot with the paintball gun, it is broken, so don't use the paintball gun, because Roblox hasn't updated it. Or, if you want, okay, let's just call this um, the sword fighting game. Or I think it might only work with R6, so if you want it, if you have certain scripts that only work with R6, you're going to want to change the avatar type to R6. And if we play now, it, I believe, should work. Okay, it does not, but if you do have any scripts like that, then yeah, they should work if you do that. And that's it for today's video. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.